Welcome to the Scale Up Valley podcast, where we bring the best founders and investors to help you scale your business from one million to one trillion. Today's guest is Marcel Volovsky, the founder and CEO at Invistu. Marcel, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to talk about Invistu and Brazil's environment for venture capital. Absolutely, and it's it's our pleasure. Uh, uh, we are very lucky to have covered almost every single region uh, in the globe here in the podcast. I would say that we need to improve in Africa, um, and uh, and Latam has been in the show uh, in the show light uh, a lot of times uh, in the in the last episodes, and we are really excited to to get to know more. Uh, even more about Brazil and, and the Latam ecosystem. And uh, I know even about the South uh, of Brazil. So that, then now we get even more, more specific within uh, Brazil. But before we start, let's get to know more about your, your career and uh, what has been uh, in, in uh, your inspiration to start in Vist. Okay, thank you. Well, uh... I, I'm I'm from Florianópolis, Florianópolis, a southern Brazilian city, located in the state of Santa Catarina, and I'm still living here. Actually, I left Florianópolis for almost for two years during the 2000 years when I went to Boston, took my MBA in business. Right. That's where I found and uh, worked with entrepreneurship, innovation, and venture capital. And then I came back to Brazil, started working with innovation companies, high-tech companies. Basically, we, we, I, I, I've been part of some, a group of members, a group of entrepreneurs that create this ecosystem here in Florianópolis. So I'm, I'm, I graduated on business also. So, and, and, I've been working with this environment since 2000, probably to year 2000. So, and uh, a lot of things going on since then. <laughs> yes, the last uh, 20 years, it was definitely a, a revolution. We can't even say that in the, since 2000, 12, 13 in Europe, for instance, uh, that was a completely different picture compared to the US at the time. And, and I'd say yes, Latam in the last three or four years has been also a, a huge explosion, right? Yeah, I, I can say that the, the venture capital industry in Brazil started during 2000, but it really happens during the last five to eight years where, right. where everything where, where everything come true. Right, right, right. So it's it's kind of similar to what happened in in Europe uh, as well, always with with the benchmark uh, in in the US and the inspiration of the of the US. And yeah, and and, and what about Invisto? Uh, let, let let us know more about um, when you found it. Uh, what is the value proposition, the investment thesis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Invisto is a venture capital fund located here in Florianópolis, which is a kind of Silicon Valley in Brazil. <laughs> it's an <laughs> island, actually. Right? It's, a, it's an island. So uh, Invisto is the first venture capital in this area. And uh, we started as Invisto two years ago. But uh, I have a, a other, other four partners at Invisto. We've been working together for more than 15 years. And then two years ago, we decided to, to work under this brand, under Invistus right. name. But Invistus, Invistus carries a lot of good, good exits, good investments. So we are, we've been working in our third fund, third venture capital mm -hmm. fund. And Got basically it. investing in the south part of Brazil, and in the earlier stages of of those of those of startups, some right. startups. For for the ones who are less educated about Brazil, uh, what would you consider the states of the of the south uh, in Brazil? Yeah, great question. Brazil has twenty six states. 
and three of them belongs to the south part of Brazil. Uh, Paraná is the one up in the north, very, very close to Sao Paulo. And then Santa Catarina and in the south part, Rio Grande do Sul. So three, three very good states for entrepreneurship for and for investing also. Right. And let's say even to help us to get another layer of education within the, each state, for instance, Santa Catarina, where you are in, the main city would be Florianópolis, and uh, in Rio Grande do Sul, it might be Porto Alegre. Correct me if I'm wrong, just, just for the ones who are also not very you familiar are right. with yeah. yeah. Actually, Porto Alegre is the capital of the Rio Grande do Sul. Florianópolis is the capital of Santa Catarina, yeah. and Curitiba yeah. is Paraná's capital. But right. uh, in Santa Cat but Florianópolis is not the largest city in, in, in Santa Catarina. The largest one is Joinville. It's, it's in the north part of the of Santa Catarina. Actually, Santa Catarina is a, a little bit different from the other states in Brazil, where the capital usually are the the capitals are usually the the largest cities. But there are a lot of other cities, well-developed cities uh, in Paraná, in Santa Catarina, Paraná, I can, I can mention Londrina, Maringá, Foz do Iguaçu, Santa Catarina, I mentioned Joinville, but there are also Blumenau, Chapecó, Jaraguá, Criciúma, Tubarão, and in, the, in Rio Grande do Sul, uh, Porto Alegre is the capital, as I mentioned, as I, as I said yeah. before, but there are other important cities such as Caxias do Sul and Pelotas. So it's a well-developed part of Brazil. Yeah. And why this passion? Why do you see an opportunity in, in these free states or in the south uh, of Brazil, a Brazilian ecosystem? Um, and why you have dedicated and focused your own thesis uh, around those that region within Brazil? Great. Um, I, I, We always say say that we are we are living in Belgium in something in a region very similar <laughs> to Belgium in Europe. Actually, this part of the, the Brazil was colonized by Europeans basically. My, my name is my my last name are Ferrari and Volovsky, an Italian and a Polish name. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we will find a lot of Germans, Italians, Poli, Poland, Polish. Uh, right. Spanish, Portuguese around south around south of Brazil, and uh, they came here for develop a new a new life. And basically, there are a lot of entrepreneurs since then. In, in our so this is very cultural here in the South Bar, and uh, and also we have the best uh, the best level of education in this part of Brazil. Uh, and employment rates in, in, in this area are incredible, lower than the, the, the rest of Brazil. As a, Santa Catarina, for example, has 4.5% of unemployment rate, while Brazil has 11%. And in some part of, some part of the north part of Brazil, we will find 16% or higher unemployment rate so um, and uh, mostly of other venture capital funds are, are located mainly in Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro so basically they work it in that area which are very good area also but I can say that Invisto can work uh, alone in the south part of Brazil make, making the, the very early stage investments for some startups okay got it and as i assume what you are saying marcel is that of course your focus is on the southern part of brazil on, on the states that we just mentioned a lot of your ventures will expand across brazil and will go to the largest state uh, namely um sao paulo uh, the cities of sao paulo and, uh, and rio de janeiro which would be the the largest uh, Uh, regions in terms of uh, of GDP in, in Brazil in terms of market size, right? Uh, that that's kind right, of what you're saying. Yes. So, yes, yeah, São Paulo represents probably more than 50% of 
the venture capital right. activity in Brazil. So we prefer to stay here with less competition and right. a lot of opportunities to invest. And uh, as I said before, the, the venture capital industry in Brazil is very recent, recent. And uh, we, we are still developing the, the ecosystem and uh, the ecosystem for startups, for innovation in the South part of Brazil is incredible. And uh, again, there are a lot of opportunities. It makes uh, a lot of sense. And it is also related with your uh, investment thesis that we ended not um, talking a lot about it. But could you explain a little bit more for the ones who are, who are listening? So what, what are your criteria for investment? At what stages do you invest? Any verticals, etc.? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's important. Uh, our thesis basically follows what the South part of Brazil develops in terms of innovation and technology. Basically, we have uh, major B2B companies and the technology relevant is IT. And I can mention IT as a, as a whole group of uh, in, in artificial intelligence, big data, cybersecurity, everything right. related to, to software and internet, right? And then, uh, as I mentioned, I, we, we are the, basically the first venture capital fund in a startup. So we, we look into uh, very early stage companies. Uh, I, we can say it's a seed money in, in Brazil, yeah. uh, investing around $5 million, five, five million reais, sorry, yes. which is almost $1, $1 million. million. And we can go into, 15 million reais, which is almost $5 million for each company's company we invest. In terms of follow-up. Uh, follow right, right. Yes, right. And, and we are very well connected to major VC funds in Sao Paulo. So Series A, B, we, we usually connect to them and help the companies to continue raising money, right? And uh, our thesis is also demands two entrepreneurs dedicated full time for for the startup and uh, we also look to some companies that are getting some revenue already so it's not that very early stage right. basically we we look into companies that have some clients business model established and also a product developed yeah, so so typically they have already raised an angel round. Uh, typically, if, if it would be the first VC check, they will not raise kind of a pre-seed with, with VCs. They will just raise the angel round and then they will go directly into the seed round with, uh, with Invest. Uh, and of course, your co-investors, right? Correct. Uh, they, uh, usually we found uh, accelerators and angels. In the, in the cap table, and then so, we get into, and then investors. Where well, you get your yeah. your leads and investment opportunities from from those sources and, and those partners uh, that work with you in the ecosystem, and there is also a certain kind of a due diligence uh, done uh, in advance, right? right? Uh, which which definitely uh, helps. Got it, um, and. Um, I also know that uh, typically there is a, a VC uh, approach that, uh, where of course there is a lot of risk involved. That um, that typically we want that one of the one of the investments of the fund will return the whole fund, uh, and then two or three would almost return the capital that was invested. Maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, and then. Uh, five will be a complete uh, failure, and uh, uh, this will work unless we have that uh, that investment that will return the the whole fund. I know that you have a different thesis around this kind of uh, high risk approach to VC. Of course, this is a, a very risky business, 
uh, as, as the name says, uh, venture capital, or, or in Portuguese, it says it even better, capital de risco for the ones who, who know um, Portuguese, but you have a more conservative approach to, to those kind of, uh, to that kind of rationale. Can you explain uh, a little bit more on that? Yes, definitely. Yes, uh, I, I can say that uh, Brazil is not US for venture capital environment, right? And uh, there are two main characteristics of our thesis. The first one is that we, we, we prefer to pick the best companies to invest. So, and, and we invest in a few group of companies not in too many companies. So our portfolio at this moment have 90 companies only. So right. we, prefer, we prefer to pick a few companies, mm -hmm. uh, understand and cooperate with the best entrepreneurs in our opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And then there is another important issue for our conservative strategy is that the, uh, basically uh, more, more than less, almost 6% of the MNAs in Brazil occurs uh, under 100 million reais, which is uh, under 120 million dollars. So uh, we, we, we must invest base, basic, in, in, in this in these statistics so if we want to make money we 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 don't need to bet actually we don't need but it's not the correct word but we we must stay investing according to this statistic unicorns or uh, unicorns in brazil are still rare you can find it uh, a lot of them, I can say there are probably 10 unicorns in Brazil. So we prefer to, to invest in a few companies, understand how we can sell it under 100, uh, under 100 million reais okay. and make, make money, making uh, a, lot of, a lot of exits. Uh, multiplying the capital in four, five, six times the the, the amount that originally invested. Okay. So, in another way, what you have been kind of sharing with the audience is that uh, more than fifty percent, or the majority of the M and A's or the exits, uh, are made under an hundred million riais, which is twenty million uh, dollars for the ones dollars. who are following which of course limits for you to have a four or five X return on investment that you make in each company. It limits the, the, the tickets that you are able to invest uh, in order to match that 20 million. Of course, to have that 20 million exit, it, if you would be the only uh, investor in the company, which is not uh, the case, uh, you would need to do uh, at least uh, four million, the four million investments that you would do, four million dollars would get the 20 million uh, dollars of, uh, of return, which means that you are trying to find deals uh, uh, that are appealing from uh, uh, in terms of price of, of the investment. So you are able to um, follow the pattern of exits that you see uh, in the market at this stage. Perfect, and and also we we are we are, we run after early exits also, Go so ahead. we can't since since we we are understand that we can multiply it by four or five times, we have to leave earlier from our investments, and it has to be coordinated and combined with the entrepreneurs also. Right, so the. So everyone needs to be on the same page uh, around that uh, that investment thesis and around that uh, that exit, and it should make sense also for the entrepreneurs to follow that kind of strategy. So again, we need to have a fit Always. in terms of the vision of the business and and the vision of the investment fund, which is Correct. an important and, point and, because and, sometimes we, we don't discuss. Sorry to, to interrupt. Don't, we don't discuss as part, part uh, partners and we don't open the books and say, look, 
this is what I'm trying to do with the fund. Look, this is what I'm trying to do with the business. Is there a fit for us to be partners on, on this business, right? And being Correct. open about and, it. Uh, yes. And recently we've, we've, we sold a, a company to Grupo Boticario, which is a, mm -hmm. it's in the beauty industry here. And we stayed in the investment for only 18 months. So, Interesting. And basically, and basically, the entrepreneurs decided to 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 sell the company. Yeah. They they started the company six months earlier than we invested. So <laughs> their their time into the business, yeah. uh, they, they spent two years in the business and make and made money. Mm -hmm. They made money, and also we we made money. We multiplied the capital over nine times so which is yeah. very good also yeah and of course the dilution uh, at the time they sold the company it, was, it would be very very different than if they would have done it after series c uh, with a very limited amount of capital yeah. uh, and and we never know uh, how many acquirers were uh, available to acquire that company also, because sometimes it's not so easy to to go via the route of uh, IPO. Uh, this is much more an alternative for for the US. But uh, again, uh, as you said, the majority of the exits are still done by uh, M and A and and not by a, a IPO. Yes, this is this is very important point that you that you mentioned, Mike. Uh, in Brazil, you probably will exit through strategic buyers exactly. and the exception is ipos exactly and how do you see uh, we, we are seeing that uh, especially the american uh, funds and also there is a lot of interest from even european founders uh, who are exploring opportunities across latin uh, I'm, I'm thinking about for instance i always uh, talk about it spain uh, the spanish entrepreneurs are quite good at tapping in, into LATAM, a lot of times more in the Spanish speaking LATAM than, than in Brazil, but we also have some, some Spanish founders uh, cracking Brazil and being able to, to build big companies there. And also uh, international founders uh, being able to build uh, uh, big companies in, in, in Brazil. But why do you see, why, why do you think it's, it's an opportunity for, for those American uh, fans and European investors to, to tap into Brazil and to, and to look into Brazil as, um, as an investment opportunity? Well, first of all, I, I can say that Brazil is cheaper. It's very cheap at this moment. All the, asset, all the assets are uh, basically undervaluated. And uh, I, I, I joined a meeting yesterday with a JP Morgan president and, and he said the same. <laughs> so right. uh, Brazil is cheap. Then second, I can say that Brazil is well positioned uh, in the world environment since China and Russia are becoming not the best alternative for Americans and, and Europeans. We've, we've, we've seen, seen a lot of discussion, the war between Russia and Ukraine. China is, some, some people, some companies are leaving China, looking for other places invest their money, where, yeah. where to produce, to invest the money and produce some uh, raw materials and, Brazil is probably is a probable alternative for those investments. And, and uh, as I said, the venture capital industry is just starting in Brazil. In this first semester, we had we had a little more than eight hundred M and A's operations in Brazil, mm -hmm. which is. 55% higher than the last year. So the capital industry is also uh, accelerating and becoming more important in the whole environment. Got it. It, it makes a lot of sense. And um, 
what I think is more difficult for investors that come from the US or from Europe and even for entrepreneurs is, is to understand the state of the art uh, in terms of certain sectors. And I think what, what is also what brings a lot of purpose of investing uh, in LATAM and, and especially in Brazil is that we, we can also make a difference with the products that we, that we build. There is still opportunities for disruption in, in a lot of industries. Uh, and, and we have seen that with fintech, and now we are seeing uh, health tech going going next. But there are still fundamental opportunities about improving the lives of people uh, and really making a, a change. Where uh, the approach in in some of European and uh, American markets are much more niche oriented, very sophisticated solutions uh, that that really don't move the needle in terms of the quality of life of, of those people are really a solution to, you know, to help a global Fortune 500 uh, amount of companies to have a better uh, security or, uh, I don't know, a very, very specific uh, solution. But I think that's the, 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 the vision, the purpose of the ventures that come into, into Brazil can really have a larger impact and as you said there are not so many big markets uh, out there to invest uh, into and, and brazil is with 215 million people uh, it's it's a very large market uh, if we consider especially in, in kind of the the west uh, us uh, europe that has, is very fragmented and, and then latam uh, and then we start looking into southeast asia which is a very different market with a lot of similarities in terms of stage with uh, with LATAM, but still uh, uh, exotic for a lot of entrepreneurs. And as you said, going into India and China is is a very different world and very very complex. And of course, Russia is is not very easy uh, as well at the moment to be considered. Uh, so so Brazil is 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 very appealing from an investment uh, perspective. And um, on on those nine. Uh, Investment. Sorry, uh, you can go ahead. No, I, I, and I and I and I and I I would just want to compliment you that yep. again, the, culturally the south part of Brazil is very similar to Europe and to to US That's also. A good point. So, yeah, yeah. So the, Brazil is huge. So we we have different different ways of living here in Brazil. So right. the the. The Europeans came to the south part of Brazil, so uh, there are a lot of similarities among the uh, European countries in the south part of Brazil. Okay, so you you know if you want to know more about the south part of Brazil, you you have now the opportunity to to connect uh, with Marcel over over LinkedIn or over Invisto. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm sure that is also help happy to to share more more about uh, about the southern parts of uh, of Brazil. And uh, according to your experience in the last uh, 15 years with with your partners investing, and of course now with with the fund in the last uh, two years investing together more formally with with a specific fund with the vehicle. And what are your tips to pick? Uh, the best teams. So um, I think this is part of the art of being uh, an investor, right? Uh, and there, it's difficult to to have a, a right or wrong and a magic formula. But what what are some of the patterns that you see on the teams that succeed uh, and the teams that don't succeed? Well, the, actually, when we decide to invest in a company, basically we are investing in the founders, right? So at in this stage, in that stage that we invest, a very early stage, we invest in the founders more than we invest in the idea or in the technology or within the market. So it's not a cake recipe, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. I would say that there are a lot of experience involved in this, in this criteria. What we actually we are well connected, as you, you mentioned before, we are very well connected to angel investor accelerators. So our network is our best source of opportunities in, in South Florida, Brazil. And uh, we've seen that the entrepreneurs are are older than ten to fifteen years ago. So. We are, we are easily finding 
some entrepreneurs over 35 years old, 40 years old. So they bring some experience from other industries, other experiences, uh, previous jobs in specific industries. And they are coming into the entrepreneurial ecosystems and uh, developing very good solutions, mainly B2B solutions, as I mentioned, which is our thesis also. Right? And it's important to mention that we are located uh, and established into ACATI. ACATI is an association of uh, entrepreneurs, of um, business comp businessmen, and we joined uh, joined almost uh, 1500 companies in this association santa catarina okay. has 12 12000 companies it companies right and in mm -hmm. this association we joined a little almost 15% of all companies in, in santa catarina which is the place where we we easily find good companies also so since we invest in a few number of companies and we are well located well re re with good relationship with investors and, and, and accelerators um, i can say that we are in a good position to to choose the ones we are we want to be part be partners right right and, and so how do you think that it's the best way to to help those those teams typically uh, what are the skills that they need? What what is the kind of help uh, that they need the most that you are able to provide with um, with your team and with with the fund? Yeah, as as I mentioned, this is also this is not a a cake recipe again, uh, where you find follow instructions and and we will succeed. I, I I don't believe in this. So we believe in our experience, in our know how. In, the, the, the mistakes we made in the past so we can we can help them with the mistakes we've made right? also we promote a lot of interactions among the entrepreneurs from into our portfolios we promote also a lot of interactions with some of our lps yeah? so half of them are entrepreneurs and businessmen so our awesome. network it's it's very important for our, our investing companies and uh, uh, also we we believe that uh, some governance is important since the beginning since we, we've invested in the companies so we, we believe that governance aggregates value, value to the company so it's not a recipe but uh, i can say that most entrepreneurs need help into the sales process so where where we can we can help them a lot since we experience different situations and again we made a lot of mistakes so probably we don't know how to uh, how to be correct but we know how to don't make mistakes so right. what didn't work yeah. in the past <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. But every company is different from the other one, and every entrepreneur is also different, different from other entrepreneurs. Yeah. So different approaches to different needs, probably. Yeah. And also, we, we have a good network of lawyers, uh, consultants, accountants, Experts. HR, HR uh, specialists. So we connect them since the, our portfolio companies need specific kind of help right. and uh, demands solution for their problems. Right. That's a good point. And you, you mentioned something important that sometimes we forget uh, about investors and especially for the founders who are listening to us. Um, investors also need to uh, look for investment and present their thesis and uh, and be able to attract uh, LPs who will, who will invest uh, in, in the fund. So it's it's kind of a marketplace, right? It's choosing or always selecting the best founders to invest in and uh, working uh, with them, partnering with them to, to deliver 
uh, great returns. And at the same time, uh, always looking for investors who want to invest in those ventures, uh, in those founders, uh, and also partnering in order to, to make a good return for, uh, for their money according to the investment thesis. So that's why it's always partnering with the founder and, and the investor. Uh, and that's kind of the, the big game in a certain way. And Mike, it's important to, to say that our uh, my, my partners and I, we, we don't come from the financial industry. We, 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 we five were entrepreneurs in the past. So very important. we, we yeah. also have experience since entrepreneurs, since businessmen. So yeah. basically we, we, we can share with our invested partners <laughs> a lot of experience <laughs> and, and uh, a lot of history also. And also ed educate them uh, about uh, how it works in, 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 in this kind of world, because of course those investors also have their investments diversified and they allocate a certain amount of their capital into this category. Uh, and they, they also need in some cases to be educated about what are the pros and cons of investing in, in venture capital. It, it's a very different world when you are able to, of course, attract uh, former founders who, who have also started their own companies and now want to pay it forward and help other entrepreneurs and see other entrepreneurs succeed, which is much more a kind of a purpose. Uh, and of course, they also want their returns. Uh, they don't want to lose their money. Uh, but uh, but of course, it, it's with a different purpose that they are investing in, in those founders. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 25% uh, uh, of our investors are well succeeded entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. who's yeah. who sold their companies yes and and they, and they are willing well, that... to cooperate and aggregate value to our portfolio also. got it got it we would stay here for hours uh, and uh, and of course you are always invited to to come again to the show to, to keep sharing your uh, your journey and uh, and some of your thoughts about the, the ecosystem and the evolution of the ecosystem. But let's go into those last uh, questions of the show uh, that are a little bit more self-reflective uh, and where we also, which of our guests shares some resources as well that they enjoy. So let's start with the first one. Um, if you'd have the opportunity to, to meet Marcel at, at the beginning of Invisto or, or even at the beginning of your journey as, as investor uh, 20 years ago uh, and would have that coffee with yourself, what advice <laughs> would you offer to your younger Marcel? <laughs> I would say that, that I should stay a little more in the computing Call it school, man. I, I I I took business school yeah. in college, right? And Good then advice. I yeah. and and I started computing at the same time. And I left computing in six months. So I would say stay a little more, spend more time. <laughs> and, never uh, never thought about it. Uh, this would apply yeah. also to me. It would help. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. And what are you the most proud of on your journey so far? So what are the things that when you look back, you really feel so happy, feel a lot of joy about? Yeah, I'm, pro I'm very proud of being part of this whole ecosystem that we are developing here, in, mainly in Santa Catarina, mainly in Florianopolis. Florianopolis nowadays is very well known not only in Brazil, in the Brazilian ecosystem, but also in some part of the world. Uh, what we've been doing here in Florianópolis is amazing. So the, the, the city changed because of the, the, the entrepreneurship and the innovation industry that, that we developed since 2000, I would say. So being part of this makes me very proud. <laughs> And still uh, a lot to do, and, and you are on, on that journey Definitely. for for, Definitely. for the present and for the future. And right. uh, worst advice ever received? <laughs> yeah, this is this is stuff. But uh, 
I would say that uh, that our biggest mistake was to keep investing in a company that we shouldn't invest. And uh, some, well, we, we, we had advices for moving forward and stepping back, but we decided to move forward and it was a bad decision at that time. And, uh, but I, I, I don't want to mention the names, obviously, not to protect the right. entrepreneur and the company, but uh, those advices at that time, it's, 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 it's easy to, to, re, to think about it now since the, the mistake was made, né? but uh, right. I would say, I would say, I would consider the other part of the, the advisors, the advices at that time. Right. It's, all, it's always difficult to understand the difference between being stubborn and, and being persistent uh, and really believing in, in the venture and, and in the team. That, that difference in everything that we do, even in our, in our own bets, in our own ventures, it's, it's always complex to understand when we should move uh, to, into another, in another direction or, or keep going, being consistent in the same direction, right? Right, but it's important to say that decision was mine or was ours decision, right? It's yeah. Not, not the advice. The I'm not guilty the advice for that. The advisor okay. for that. So it's our fault. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. And now resources. Uh, favorite book. It can be in any field, of course. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm not a heavy reader. But I, when I, I like to read about biographies and true histories, um, I, I, lo I love to read about entrepreneurs. I can say that I don't have a favorite book, but, I, uh, but I, I've, I've, I've been reading a lot of biographies and true histories, which, which are my, my favorite kind of books. But I, don't, I really don't have a favorite one. Right. Even yesterday, I was just uh, going to bed and, and looking into to the amazing speech that uh, Steve Jobs did when he came back to Apple again and uh, he started the, um, the, the slogan, uh, think different and uh, the rationale about where there, there is, he was saying there is so much noise at the moment that it's really, really difficult to stand out. And I was thinking, oof. Today, it's even worse. There are so many brands out there, so so many stuff, so many promises. Uh, it's it's really a very very difficult from a, a, a branding perspective to to stand out and really have a unique purpose, a unique vision, a unique value proposition, differentiation, etc. But anyway, favorite movie or series? Yes, well, movies. I I like it. I I really like. Quentin Tarantino's movies. <laughs> so he's my, my favorite. My Those favorite are strong. Director. <laughs> yes, yes. But I like I, I like him a lot. Their movies. His movies are very different from the others, from the pattern. And the, the one I like most is Pulp Fiction. And any any favorite podcast or any podcast that you are currently listening to that you would recommend? And it could, of course, could be Brazilian yes. uh, podcast. I, I listen to, I listen to, I'm, I've been listening to a lot of them. Stock Pickers, I like, it's a Brazilian, it's a Brazilian bot, podcast, but I, the one I, I like most is, uh, it's a, it's a local one, actually, they, it's produced here in, in Florianópolis, Jogando para a Plateia, uh, which means, probably means playing for the audience, something like that, something like that. Yeah. And uh, basically they interview local entrepreneurs from different in industries, and I like a lot, and I like a lot. Right. So it's kind of playing for the audience would be kind of the... Uh, yes, jogando, jogando para a plateia, para playing plateia. for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's not a, a, a great uh, translation, but that, that's the best. Uh, I can. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> 
because it's it's a very uh, specific Brazilian uh, expression. Uh, right. But, right. Uh, but anyway, our conversations with with founders and uh, and entrepreneurs, uh, and right. of course, that's that's the ones we, from, we love to listen. From, yes, from different industries. Yes, that's 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 what I like most. Yeah. Marcel, it was really a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, today, and uh, also educating us more about the opportunity in the south uh, of Brazil for for the ones who are listening. Curitiba is the capital of Paraná, Florianópolis, the capital of Santa Catarina, uh, and Porto Alegre, the capital of Rio Grande do Sul. Those were the three states that we were talking uh, um, the most during this, this show. Marcel, thank you so much again. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure to join this podcast, your podcast. And uh, sorry for my spoken English, some mistakes, problems, definitely, for sure. But it's okay. I I I think I, we we discuss good points about our thesis, our environment, and thank you again for the opportunity. Uh, and in in the opposite way, we really appreciate the effort that everyone does in in the podcast. Uh, the majority of us are not uh, native in English, including myself. So huge effort that we do in order to be able to do something global that everyone can uh, reach out to. So I, I also appreciate your efforts to communicate in, a, in, in out of your native uh, language as I, as I do, that sometimes we are not able to express ourselves in, in right. the best way possible. But I think that everyone understands out there and, and appreciates our, our effort. And to our community, we keep bringing you the best founders and investors uh, to inspire you on your journey and to make it a little bit easier. Uh, see you soon and keep scaling.